checking on the lathe and since it involves some use of the four jaw chuck uh, I thought it was maybe of interest to some people and I decided to make a video of the next stage <clears throat> so I've made the six nodes I call them these uh, stainless steel parts around the bottom there's six of those already I make another six to go at the top and make a second hexagonal ring to fit on the top of this so of course these angles here are 120 degrees and I had to work out how to get those angles just right but it did work out fortunately I was going to use brass or bronze for this but I found I actually had a bit of scrap stainless steel bar one inch in diameter and decided to use that the first job is to um, cut off a one inch uh, section off this uh, one inch diameter stainless steel bar I happen to have lying around it came in with my father's stuff I inherited it and um, I'm I, I couldn't put this shaft right through the center of the spindle because it's uh, the spindle is 7 8 inch diameter and the shaft is 1 inch so it wouldn't fit so I had to hold it like this actually it was uh, longer before I took those 6 inches off and put a steady behind it uh, and drilled a, a center hole in the end so I've got a center position here ready for placing this, this live center so I've got here a Chinese live center I think it cost me about ten dollars pretty amazing stuff that you can get to, so cheaply from China so that's a live center that means the center spins around a dead center doesn't spin that goes in the end on the tailstock like so clamp it down tighten it up a bit I'll lock it and I think I just tightened the chuck okay and I've got it revving at 2000 no, um, 450 RPM. This chuck speed causes an optical illusion, making the chuck of the spinning backwards. Maybe I'll let this a bit faster than what I used last time. I've made a mark here at the one inch mark, and I'm using a, uh, a parting tool. I've got a, a quick change chuck here, which I can remove the tools quickly and easily. Also from China. It's on a tapered wedge, and when you pull the lever, it tightens the wedge up and the parting tool is a thin blade it's very difficult to keep this thing positioned correctly in the tool holder it doesn't seem to work very well uh, possibly because the only parting tool I've got is um, not perfectly, the edges aren't perfectly parallel I don't think okay so I made a mark on here at one inch with the hacksaw and so I'm ready to now start parting it it'll probably make a bit of a racket It's not cutting it very much, so I think I need to lower it. This uh, tool has this thing determines the center height of the tool itself, so I can screw that up a little bit, which lowers the tool down lower. Yes, I'll cut that You don't want to cut too much or it'll start chattering in the jam. It would be a big help if I had somebody uh, holding the camera for me. Now the 
next day just to clean up these blocks and uh, after it's been cut off with a parting blade it often leaves a bit of a nubbin behind. This is actually quite a big one but it doesn't really matter very much. Uh, it does make it difficult to face the block but it makes it but it's fine if you drill a hole in it first. So the next job is to drill a hole. Before drilling a hole I'm going to use a uh, centering drill um, which uh, is very rigid and doesn't wiggle around like a regular drill does. So that's very good for making a pilot hole to start the drill. So I'm going to taper on the tailstock here. And we'll tighten that up. Set it on half an inch, which is a starting point I use. Since if you go forward further than that, it pops the taper, the Morse taper out. Okay, so I'm just going just to drill a hole there. Paper on it. That makes it easier to get the quarter inch drill in. So here we go. Okay. There's a stainless steel I'm drilling, so it's actually quite hard. You don't want to drill too fast for it'll get the drill very hot and get a blue and then it's useless. Here I'm just using a standard cutting tool to do a facing and a surface. First just take the blood line back off, get rid of some of the from the cutting tool. To make an automatic crossfeed cut, I need to turn on the leaf screw, which is along the bottom here. I'm going to just leave it up, and that will make the lead screw start rotating. Uh, it's got a very noisy gear train. Okay, look at it. it doesn't seem to be any missing teeth. As I mentioned earlier, the 40-speed uh, gearbox controls the speed of rotation of the lead screw. The difference is that in the crossfeed mode, the crossfeed actually moves at 0.3 times the speed of the lead screw, so it does a little bit slower, which is useful. And of course we've got this uh, selector position in the bottom for the cross slide. And we move the tool up to the point where we want it to cut near the centre of the piece and set the crossfeed power feed going by turning the clutch clockwise. It's actually the uh, groove along the lead screw which is driving this mechanism rather than the thread of the lead screw. And you can see here making a fairly fine cut and the nice thing about the power feed is you get a very even cut across the surface especially if it's shallow and makes a nice smooth surface and that's better than what you can do by hand where you tend to be stopping and starting. The next stage of the process is to make a chamfer on the end of the block and this could normally done, be done properly by um, using the compound slide and moving it across to a 45 degree angle. So you drive the tool across at 45 degrees and make a, an angle or cone shape on the end of the block. There's the screw that's used to loosen the uh, cross slide, so that you can, or the compound slide rather, so that you can change the angle. But here I was a bit lazy and I just used the edge of the cutting tool, which has also got an angle on it, to make a, a little bit of a chamfer.
It's not quite 45 degrees, but it doesn't seem to matter much. It looks okay. 